Praise the Lord. Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. We want to welcome you to this morning's Sunday School broadcast. Um, our Sunday School lesson for this morning comes from Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. Uh, we want to start the broadcast off this morning with a special prayer for for those who are in the path of Hurricane uh, Irma. Uh, it has hit landfall on the continental United States um, around Florida and is headed up to uh, the west the west side of the coast of Florida up to Georgia. Then uh, it's going to hit some of Alabama. And uh, it's also going to head up to Tennessee. Um, my daughter is in the path of it uh, down at Tuskegee. So they have already closed her school um, for tomorrow. And uh, so we'll be just praying for those who are um, in the path. Uh, one of our normal uh, participants in the conference call, um, pa uh, Apostle Patrice, uh, is down in Florida, and she sent me a note today that her her uh, lights power has went out, and she's declaring uh, power. Okay, I see she's got on this morning. Praise God! Uh, she's declaring, "Let there be light, <laughs> and and peace be still for this storm." Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you're going to do. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that your, your awesomeness, your glory, your power, and your majesty is, is everywhere. And we thank you that you are everywhere. You are a very present help in a time of trouble. So, Lord, we, we're calling on you this morning, dear Lord, um, to bless those that are in the path of, of, of Hurricane Irma. Lord, we, we, we thank you for what you've already done, dear Lord, for those that uh, the, the storm has already passed over. And we ask you, dear Heavenly Father, that you bless them and, and give them strength to, to recover in the aftermath and, and, and give them comfort. And then those that are in the storm right now, dear Lord, because that's how life is sometimes. We either coming out of a storm, we're in a storm, or we're headed to a storm, Lord. We just ask you, dear Lord, to just be that God that, that's there as a comforter and a keeper in the midst of it all. Thank you for being true to your word that you said you'd be with us always, even until the ends of the earth. We glorify you, God, and we magnify you, and we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your keeping power. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your staying power. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your ability to say to a storm, peace be still. And Lord, you gave us that same authority. So we say to the storm, storm, peace, be still. And Lord, all of those that are dealing with the power allergies and, and food shortages and gas shortages, God, we just ask you to step in and do whatever needs to be done for them. We thank you for this, Lord, and we praise you. Now, Lord, as we get ready to study your Sunday school lesson this morning, we just ask you for a special anointing to Heavenly Father. Anoint us afresh, dear Lord, that your word might go forth with power, with clarity, with no error, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, to just touch that those that are here listening, dear Heavenly Father, now and those that are going to listen in the future might be blessed by this word. That someone might be encouraged, that someone might, might grow in their faith in God, that someone, dear Heavenly Father, might even be saved. We thank you for this, Lord, and we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. For it is in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 17, Genesis chapter 17, starting at verse 1. Genesis chapter 17, starting at verse 1, and I'm reading out of a New Living Translation. Genesis chapter 17, starting at verse 1, out of a New Living Translation, and I'm going to read down to verse 14. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram 
excuse me, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be, be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between you, between me and you and your descendants after you in the generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I will give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan, an everlasting possession. And I will be their God and I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants, after you, after uh, you and your descendants after you throughout their generation. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you, and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. And you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin. And it shall be a sign of a covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male child in your generation. He who is born in your house or bought with money from any foreigner who is not your descendant, he who is born in your house and he who is brought with your money must be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the circumcision and the uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of the foreskin, that person shall be cut off from the people he has broken my covenant. Amen, amen, amen. What a word, what a word, what a word. This, this section of, 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 of our Sunday school lesson for the next um, three weeks now, started last week, uh, is dealing with covenant. Dealing with God's covenant. Uh, a covenant is, is an agreement uh, between two parties. Uh, it, it is a, a deal. It is a contract. Matter of fact, but when it comes to a covenant, it's more, more in depth than a physical law contract that we might go into, like buying a house or, 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 or applying for a loan or something like that, or making a business deal. This is a divine contract. And, and the keeper of this contract, this keeper, the, the, the keeper of this covenant is, is God himself. He's the one that established the covenant. He's the one that established the contract. And he is the one that is going to make sure that this covenant is kept. Each party has a role and responsibility. But the ultimate role of the covenant is, is God himself. And, and, and that's, that's, that's what we're going to deal with today. We're going to deal with this covenant that God made with Abraham. God made a covenant with Abraham. And this covenant that he made with Abraham was that God was going to always, always promise to keep him, always promising to bless him and bless his seed. All the blessings of Abraham.
And so with this lesson, uh, we're going to concentrate on uh, 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 the mark of the covenant, which is circumcision. The mark of the covenant, which is circumcision. Last week, I, I was un, uh, was unable to teach Sunday school, and the person I had in place that was going to teach had had a situation to come up, and they couldn't teach either. But the the the, the last week lesson uh, showed the seal of the rainbow after Noah and the flood. God gave them a rainbow and promised never to destroy the earth ever again with a flood. So so that was God's covenant with Noah and us still today. Every time we see a rainbow, we should look up and see the promises of God, the covenant that he has made with his people, the covenant that he has made with us. Yes, it rains on the just and the unjust, but God made a promise that he will never again flood the earth and destroy all of the people. Oh, what a blessing, blessing covenant that is. But now, today, we're looking at this covenant with Abraham that was 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 marked and sealed uh, by circumcision. So, we first have to look at who is Abraham. Uh, Abraham um, was originally from the land of Ur, uh, which was a Chaldean territory, uh, which would be modern-day Iraq area. He was the son of Terah, and, and uh, Terah was a descendant of Sham, one of Noah's sons. And you remember Sham was one of the brothers who covered up uh, Noah and hid his nakedness. And, and when he did that, God declared a blessing upon them. And, uh, and, and Noah did at that time, and the curse on Cush. And so this 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 blessing that 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 God that God has 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 bestowed on on, on them uh, has now came down to Abraham. And Abraham, at this point in time, as we pick up our lesson, is is still named Abram, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. One of the key points that that really jumps out of this lesson is that when God identifies himself in this text, when God identifies himself in this text, in, um, in the verse he says, I, I am almighty God, walking be walk before me and be blameless. He's saying to, to, to them, I am El Shaddai. I am God, being the powerful one, being the mighty one. I am El Shaddai, all sufficient one. I am El Shaddai. The God who, who, who can make a covenant with, with, with moral and ethical character because he's that kind of God. When he makes a promise, when he makes a covenant, he, 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 he's saying, I'm doing it with, with all of the moral, all of the holiness, all of the righteousness behind it. And it's going to be ethical. It's not going to be a trick. See, that's the difference between God and Satan. God, when he makes a promise, it's there, there's no, no, uh, 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 what they call, a, um, um, no, not red tape. That ain't what I'm looking for. That there, there's no small print that, 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 that says, well, if you, you know, uh, you know, no tricks in the, in, in the contract, no tricks in the covenant, God's promises, he's faithful to them. He can be trusted. And that's what he, he is. He says he's El Shaddai, the powerful one, the mighty one. Oh, hallelujah. And so today's lesson, today's lesson, as we look at it, uh, our key verse, our key verse in today's lesson is verse two. I, I will make a covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. That That's that's our, 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 our main scripture. Uh, it's our key verse. And, and then our key concept is, is that God always keeps his promises. I can keep saying that over and over and over again. And the message for the children, the keys for kids, is that we can always know that whatever God promised, big or small, he will do. 
And so as we look at this lesson this morning, we're going to uh, have some lesson facts. We're going to explain what God promises, promised to Abraham and his descendants in this covenant. We're going to look at some biblical principles to know that God always keeps his, his promise. And then we're going to have some daily applications that we need to walk away from. And, and our daily application that we need to take from this lesson is to think about ways God has showed himself faithful to us and, and, and has kept us and, and, his, and his promises in our everyday life. Um, as I said earlier, I, I know some are on the line that are dealing with the hurricane right now and others are dealing with other other uh, uh, storms in life, whether they're financial storms, health storms, mental storms. But, but one thing we can be assured of is that God is always faithful and he keeps his promises to us each and every day of our lives. Oh, hallelujah. And so as we look at this lesson, we're going to break it down into three parts. God's new promise, God's new, new name that he gave Abraham, and God's new mark that he put on the children of Israel. Amen. So let's look at our first part of our lesson, verses 1 and 2. And verses 1 and 2 reads, uh, When Abraham, I'm going to read it out of the uh, New Living Translation. When Abraham was 99 years old, the, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. God said, hey, I'm going to make a covenant with you and give you and give you countless descendants. Oh, hallelujah. God made a promise to Abraham. He made a promise to him at 99 years old. God showed up and appeared to him and made him a promise that, that he was going to be there. God spoke into Abraham's life a prophetic word that, 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 that I'm making a promise over you. I'm, I'm blessing you. I'm going to bless you and, and I'm going to bless you and your descendants. And I'm guaranteeing this. And, and, and he says, now, now, he says, serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. God was telling Abraham right then and there, this, this is the condition of this, 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 this covenant I'm making that you might serve me faithfully and live a blameless life because God is faithful and he's already blameless and he's bringing Abraham into a contract with him and it has to be a contract where we are at equal standpoints and our holiness and our lives are living faithful and serving the Lord with gladness is part of that covenant contract. Oh, hallelujah. God made the promise. And you know, God had made so many other promises to Abraham from the beginning when, when he called him out of the land of Ar, told him that he was gonna, gonna be a father of nations. Told him that. And he called him out of the land of Ur and told him to come out and, and follow him. And Abraham listened to the one and true and living God and followed him out of uh, from his kindred to a land that God had promised him. And God had also had already, already had promised him that he was going to be the, the, the father of many nations. But, but now, not only was he promising this, he was taking it to the next level. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Our next part of this lesson is, is, is the new name. Listen to verses 3 through 8 from the New Living Translation. At this... Abraham fell face down on the ground. <clears throat> then God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of multiple nations. What's more, I am changing your name. It will no longer be Abraham. Instead, I mean, Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham. For you will be the father of many nations. 
I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations and kings will be among them. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give the entire land of Canaan where you now live as a foreigner to you and your descendants and it will be their possessions forever and I will be their God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. And so in this section, we see God giving Abraham a new name. God changed his name from Abram to Abraham. What does the name Abram mean? Abram means high father. That's what his name meant. But God has now changed his name to Abraham. And Abraham means the father of many nations. But not only did he change Abraham's name, he later on changed Abraham's wife's name, Sarah. He changed it to Sarah. Sarah means my princess. But Sarah means mother of nations. And so God has changed both of their names to, to mean that they're going to be the father and the mother of many nations. Oh, glory, hallelujah. When God changes our name, oh, hallelujah. When we go from being sinners to saints, oh, when God changed our name, when we go from being unrighteous to being the children of righteousness, when God changes our name, oh, hallelujah, what a blessing it is when God changes our names. Oh, I, <laughs> oh, I just, it, it just makes me happy because I, I, I think about when, when God touched me, when the Lord Jesus touched me, I, 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 I had a new walk and I had a new talk. And, 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 and not only that, but I, I, I know I got a new name. Hallelujah. New way of living, new way of talking, new way of walking. God changed his name. But not only did God change his name, he gave him this, this name and then he kept saying over and over again, your name, your new name has attached to it many nations. Your new name has nations attached to it. I'm going to make you uh, uh, the father of many nations, multiple nations. But then he comes back in verses 5, 6, and 7. And he keeps saying to him over and over again, Once more, I've changed your name. It will no longer be Abraham. Instead, you will be called the father of... You will be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful, and you will become many nations in verse 6. And then in verse, verse, verse 7, he says to him again in verse 7 that, that, that this is an everlasting covenant from generations to generations, and, and, and I'm making you the father of many nations again. He's just constantly running this thing down, this threefold uh, uh, calling, a threefold blessing upon him to be the father of many nations. Oh, hallelujah. His descendants are going to be blessed from generations to generations. Oh, hallelujah. That, that's just a marvelous promise. And, and I want to just stop here parenthetically and just, just ask this question. What does God promise you? Well, I'm going to answer that question for you. You are the seed of Abraham. And because you and I are part of the seed of Abraham, he's also promised us many blessings. Many blessings. We're going to be fruitful. And our descendants are going to be fruitful. And from our descendants are going to come kings. From our descendants are going to come nations. Oh, hallelujah. That's, that's the blessing of Abraham. 
It is upon us. The New Testament tells us over in Galatians chapter chapter uh, uh, three that 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 we who are faithful to God. We who are part of the household of the Lord, we who have given our lives to Jesus Christ, we are under the blessings of Abraham. Oh, hallelujah. God blessed Abraham and we have record after record after record of how God has blessed Abraham. So we know that he blessed Abraham. He's going to bless us also. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. The blessings of Abraham upon our lives. The blessings of Abraham to, 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 to have your presence with us, even in the midst of our trials and tribulations. The blessings of Abraham to, to, to not only have your presence with us, but to have your power right there at, at, our, at our fingertips. All the blessings of Abraham to have the peace that passes all understanding. The blessings of Abraham to have the prosperity of Abraham. The blessings of Abraham upon us. And he says in verse 8, this land that you're in, Canaan, I'm going to take care of that too as your possessions. So yeah, at the blessings of Abraham, we also have possessions. I, I could go negative right now because many people, many people, they grab a hold to the blessings of Abraham and, and all they all think about is, is the the, the materialistic things that come from the blessings of Abraham. But I, I'm thankful today for the material blessings that do come from being part of the, the blessings of Abraham, the seed of Abraham. But, but, but what I really am excited about is that one of Abraham's descendants was Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for my sins and who God raised from the dead. And because I confessed him as my Lord and Savior and believe in him, I now have access to the tree of life. My name is written up in heaven. Oh, you ought to get excited that your name is in the Lamb's book of life. Oh, yes, it's great to have possessions. It's great to have power where you can tell demons to be still. But the blessing is, is that our name, oh, hallelujah, is written up in heaven. God has signed our name. Glory, hallelujah. And we one day will walk the streets of God and we will be in his presence. That's the ultimate blessings of Abraham. Oh, hallelujah. So, so we talked about this new promise. The promise to be the father of many nations. We talked about Abraham's new name, went from being Abram to Abraham, the father of many nations. Now we got to talk about this new mark, this new mark that God has placed upon Abraham. This mark is circumcision. Listen to verses 9 through 14. Then the Lord said unto Abraham, your, responsi your, your, your responsibility, your responsibility, your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. You and all your descendants have this continual responsibility. Oh, if we were in church right now, I have somebody holler back at me. Responsibility. Yes, yes. You have a responsibility in this covenant. You have an obligation in this covenant. What's your obligation? Listen to it. You've got to obey these terms. Verse 10. This is the covenant that you and your descendants must keep. Each male among you must be circumcised. Oh, hallelujah. What is circumcision? Circumcision is the cutting away of the foreskin. The cutting away of the foreskin of the male organ. Now, from a health standpoint, 
this this is something that had been done before. People were cutting away the foreskins of male because disease get caught up in the foreskin and the, the, the male organ is the, the producer of the seed. And so therefore people were getting, the women were, were receiving the seed and at the same time receiving the disease and, 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 and the people, the children would come out sick and all of that and the women would die and men would get sick and all of those kind of things. So, so people had been cutting off this foreskin before, but never has it been marked as something God was going to use as a sign. God decided to use circumcision as a sign. Well, what does circumcision do? Well, like I said, it's cutting off of that foreskin. It's a cleansing. It's a cleansing. And he says, I'm going to clean you guys. I'm going to clean you right at the depths of your depravity. The, the, the depths of who you are. I'm going to cleanse you. And as I cleanse you, I'm going to cleanse the next generation. From generation after generation, everybody will have this seal that you guys and everyone is cleansed by God himself. Oh, that's how God is. He, he, he cleans us. He, 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 he doesn't just physically cleanse us. He cleanses us on the inside. He creates in us a clean heart. And he renews a right spirit in us. And that's what he was doing with this sign of circumcision. It's being used as a cleansing process to say that God wants us to be holy. God wants us to be righteous. He wants us to be pure and clean. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name. Circumcision is that sign that God used in his covenant with Abraham. For we know the word of God says there is no, rem without the a shedding of blood, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Without the shedding of blood, and so this 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 cleansing, this this cutting of the foreskin, this 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 this, this blood being being let out on every individual in, in, in Abraham's descendants. It's a blood that, that seals the covenant. Oh hallelujah. But thanks be to God. Now, you know I gotta bring this to the New Testament. Because in the New Testament, we find over in Acts that they had an issue. That people were giving their lives to Jesus Christ. But they weren't following the ceremonial cleansing of circumcision. And people were so upset. But it came out to be that God was not just going to circumcise the flesh anymore. He was going to circumcise the heart. And, and, the, and, the, and the circumcision that occurred, the cutting, the blood that, that had to be shed was done on Calvary's Hill. And so everybody now that believes in Jesus Christ has a circumcision of their heart. Oh, hallelujah. And we've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Not the blood of someone being circumcised, but by the very blood. Oh, I know it was the blood that saved me. I know it was the blood that cleansed me. I know it was the blood. Oh, hallelujah. And so God, when he made this covenant with Abraham, he made it and marked it by the seal of circumcision. And not only was Abraham to be circumcised, but it says each male child among him must be circumcised. You must cut off the flesh of your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between me and you. And your gen from generation to generation, every male child must be circumcised on the eighth day of, the, of his birth. Jesus even went through this same process. This appears not only... To, to, this applies not only to the members of your house, but also your servants born in your house and the foreigners born whom you have purchased. All must be circumcised. 
Your bodies will bear the mark of an everlasting covenant. And any male who fails to circumcise, to be circumcised, will be cut off from the covenant family for the breaking, for breaking the covenant. Those who didn't want to be circumcised were going to be cut off. The physical circumcision. They weren't part of the family. Those of us who, fa who, who fail to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus will also be cut off. We need Jesus in our life. We need him to cleanse us because we have a new covenant with him. Abraham's covenant is still in effect, but Jesus' covenant supersedes it and puts it into a spiritual covenant. Hallelujah. Thank you for the new covenant. And how do we obey this new covenant? How are we responsible for this new covenant? Jesus put it succinctly when he said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart and soul and your neighbor as yourself. So if you've confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you truly believe he is in your heart, your job now is to show your love for him and your love for your neighbor. And that way you don't ever have to worry about not being under the covenant of Jesus Christ. Thank you all for listening to our word today. And Thoughts that I want you to ponder as we get ready to close this lesson is God will always keep his promise. He's faithful. He's kept his promises. This is, this is his covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he said there will always be a king on his throne. He says later on, and we know we got King Jesus. Number two, God always expects submission, obedience to his will. In our lives, we're to make him Lord over everything. Give God what's due God. Your obedience, your submission. And when, we, when we're obedient and submitted to God, he's trustworthy. He's loyal. And he keeps his covenant. I thought to remember... Our connection with God can result in an intimacy greater than any other relationship. When we're connected with God, oh, hallelujah, what he can do with our lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your spiritual circumcision that is done to all Christians by your spirit. The circumcision of the heart. Help us to live in the manner your word would have us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Before we close the recording, we always like to give those who listen to us now and in the future an opportunity to give your life to Christ so that you can experience this spiritual circumcision of the heart. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sin. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Everyone be blessed. Please continue to pray for those who are in the path of Hurricane uh, Irma. And just keep lifting them up. And we believe that God will bless them. Amen. Be safe. Love you. Peace.